What's up, buttholes? My name's James Reeves, and today on TFB TV, we're talking about the five things you guys ask me about the most. No, not whether or not I'm into dudes or if Gaston Glock is my sugar daddy. I mean gear that you guys ask me about on my videos and, for that matter, what me and Double G do in our spare time is our business. I don't do a lot of gear videos because there's so much gun content out there that I still have to make, but I came up with this concept over a year ago and I've just been flat out avoiding it. But I also love gear a lot, and if this video does well enough, maybe I'll dip back into this jaunty little kit bag again for a sequel. I've noticed the same comments over the years asking about what kind of gear I'm using in what specific video, and it's time to give you guys some answers. In fact, I'll even try to remember to link the items in the description so you can get them yourself if you're interested. Rule number one, always look cool. Unfortunately, it's not a rule that I follow, but it's a rule nonetheless. And while an eye patch a la Solid Snake or Snake Plissken or Patchy the Pirate is a pretty hardcore look, two functioning normal eyes is almost as cool while giving you neat perks like depth perception and peripheral vision. Although an argument could be made that you never have to think about winking through a peep sight if you only have one eye, so I guess it's a toss-up. But if you insist on being mainstream, eye protection is a good eye Dia, and it might be what gets asked about the most in my videos. For the past five or six years, I've worn the same set of frames, the electric Knoxvilles. The Knoxville uses subtle branding. It's available in a lot of different colors, different frame colors, lenses, two sizes, regular and extra large, and it's popular enough that there are a lot of good third-party lenses you can swap in yourself at home if you want something that the factory doesn't offer. They're also Italian-made, but most of the non-polarized options cost well under $100. I have several pair myself, and they've been in nearly every TFB TV video where I'm shooting. Another cool thing about Electric is they'll periodically run veteran and first responder-only sales, which is a pleasant surprise from a California company. Now, understandably, some people insist on getting ballistic rated lenses for their iPro, and fortunately, that's another third-party option out there. I've mentioned Tactical RX several times in past videos after they set me up with a sample set of custom lenses they made for me. I tested the lenses out and even shot them with a 12 gauge, and they held up pretty well. I've never turned back, and I've been using Tactical RX lenses almost since TFB TV started five, six years ago. Tactical RX lenses are ballistic rated, and they'll even make them with your eye prescription if you use glasses or contacts. Several government agencies buy from Tactical RX as well. They'll make lenses for just about any frames you have and install them for you. You even get to pick the color. They're not cheap, a couple hundred bucks, but they last a long time. They look good and you get ballistic level protection. Not to mention you get corrective lenses if you need them, all wrapped into one thing, and that's pretty awesome. Moving on to thing number two, chest rigs. Huge chest rig guy right here for training. I've got a handful of them, love them, but by far my favorite's the Spiritus Bank Robber. The Bank Robber is a minimalist elastic chest rig that you can get in several colors. You guys ask me about them all the time. It's the perfect size with four cells that'll hold four AR-15 mags, MP5 mags, MPX mags, even AK mags. Although I'd probably not use sharp steel, third world shithole country, child slave labor tier surplus magazines in this elastic rig if you're using an AK, maybe stick to P mags. You could buy the straps and you can go narrow or wide. This isn't like a heavy load bearing harness. For Pete's sake, you're holding four magazines here. So the wide straps I think are overkill unless you have osteoporosis or something, in which case I'd get a couple of gallons at 2% and maybe a Planet Fitness membership instead of a chest rig. With narrow straps, if you properly adjust them, you will absolutely forget that you're even carrying this rig, and it just looks rad, especially in black. You also have some shock cord on either side of the cells that you can use to cinch up a tourniquet, a pack of sour Skittles, soft pack of Newports, water bottle, Whatever. I recently talked about the Whiskey 2.4 chest rig that's very, very similar to the Bank Robber, but easier to get and cheaper slightly. It's also a 5 cell instead of a 4 cell. I like the Bank Robber better, but the Whiskey 2.4 is pretty good too. Finally, my boys at Helicon Techs make something called the Training Mini Rig, or the TMR, which isn't as minimalistic as the Bank Robber, but it will hold 4 rifle mags, 4 pistol mags, plus it's got a center pouch, for ear pro, a tourniquet, small bits of gear, beef jerky, whatever you want to put in there, and 
an optional removable drop pouch as well. All that, and it's about the same price as the bank robber, roughly a hundred bucks. From a practical standpoint, the TMR might be one of the best rigs for the money out there. Oh, there it is! Woo! It's virtually perfect. But if you want literally perfect instead of virtually perfect, I suggest getting it in denim. Yes, I said f***ing denim. The blue denim version even has the traditional blue jean orange thread. It just drips swag. If you don't want to be relentlessly pursued by interested potential sexual partners while you're training, I would stay away from the blue jean rig because it's just too potent. Moving on to number three, watch. I am a minor watch guy and I think the no date sub has to be the best looking watch ever made, but I only break that out once or twice at SHOT Show because the Garmin Phoenix is otherwise on my wrist night and day, night and day. I mean, look at this tan line. It's absolutely disgusting, right? My wedding ring comes off more often than this thing. It might be the most important piece of gear I own. I started with the Phoenix One back in the day because it had some basic features, but I could also load custom GPX coordinates and waypoints onto the watch. So if Lindsay and I went backcountry camping, I could add coordinates and POIs myself and use the watch instead of a standalone GPS unit or use the watch as a backup to my handheld Garmin unit. The Phoenix 2 was a decent upgrade, and then the Phoenix 3 was absolute dog shit because at that point you couldn't load custom waypoints anymore. So I switched to a Sunto for about a year because of that. Garmin skipped the Phoenix 4 because apparently Phoenix 4 is an extremely vulgar Chinese curse word, and if anyone knows the translation, I'm dying to understand it in the comments. The Phoenix 5 was then introduced, and it was an absolute game changer. It made every other watch out there look like a Cracker Jack prize in comparison. I tossed my Suunto and I actually personally reached out to Garmin to see if I could get a review copy. They gave me an influencer discount on the Phoenix 5. I didn't really do anything other than wear the watch. This is the first time I'm talking about it. Apparently that wasn't good enough for Garmin, so when I asked if I could get the same discount on the new 6, they basically told me to f*** off, which is okay. The 6 is probably the greatest wrist-borne device ever devised that doesn't have retractable blades or a self-destruct sequence, and those features are probably going to come out with the Phoenix 7. So let me count the ways. First, it's a good-looking watch. It's waterproof, it's durable as shit, especially if you get it with a sapphire face. Bands are super easy to replace, and there are tons of options available for it. It uses a color screen that doesn't wash out at all in direct sunlight, and I wonder why my cell phone can't do that shit. You can even get a metal band, and the Garmin will make a great dress watch. I wear mine to court all the time. I get compliments on it. The Apple Watch, on the other hand, looks like Wally f the Casio. The Apple Watch battery life is horrible, plus the little jobs clock doesn't have a standalone GPS chip like the Phoenix does. The Phoenix looks like a watch made for men, not for Peter Pan Syndrome San Franciscan e-commerce marketers. Garmin makes three sizes of the Phoenix, and other than the size, the only difference between the three is battery life. I have the mid-size, and I get about two weeks of battery life, plus an extra day or two if I'm in the sun enough and the solar array behind the face picks up some charge. Battery life varies by how much you use the GPS and on what setting. It's got all the smartwatch functions that you want and extremely advanced biometrics like that cringy whoop strap thing, but you don't have to pay a subscription fee to get all that info, all that detailed sleep data, respiration, stress levels, heart rate, exercise recovery times, etc., etc., etc. And you can view all of that data in real time either on the watch or on your phone. The amount of data and more the accuracy of the data is mind-blowing. You, of course, have GPS, which is great for exploring or getting spot-on distances and times for cardio like jogging, swimming, biking. You can also pipe music through to Bluetooth headphones or speakers of your choice. My Phoenix is linked to my Spotify account, and it downloads the playlist that I designate with the watch. You can also use Android Pay with the Phoenix, meaning that it works with contactless pay terminals, meaning that I have quite literally purchased beer using my watch already this week. There's so much more to it, but the last thing I'll mention is that the 6 also has built-in U.S. topographical maps with trails. So if you hike a lot, you don't have to install anything to get detailed trail maps with topo data anywhere in the U.S. I can't say enough about this watch. 
And if you're willing to install the app in your phone and learn a couple of tricks, I can unequivocally recommend this watch to anyone, even if you don't plan on using the GPS features at all or all that often. The biometrics, the battery life, smartwatch features, music, wallet function, all wrapped into a sleek package make, in my opinion, the Phoenix 6 a must have. Now for number four, holsters. You guys ask me for holster recommendations quite often. I have a lot of them, but I'm just going to do one. This one's easy. I like minimalist holsters because they conceal better and I don't care if a gun's touching my bare skin. In fact, I love a Glock slide nestled against my right butt cheek for 12 hours a day. But I also need a holster to be tuckable because I wear a suit to work. And I like the option to use them without a belt or with shorts or with a fanny pack. So the Raven Vanguard is my go-to. I got a whole bunch of these things you can see. It's a trigger guard only holster. It's light, it's low profile, it's cheap as hell. It's like 30 or 40 bucks. It works well with a belt and a suit and it gives you the option to run a lanyard through it just in case you wanna run the holster to an anchor point, like a belt loop or a key ring on your fanny pack. When you draw, the holster pops off. It's easy to run at strong side four o'clock, like I usually prefer, or appendix if I'm driving or being lazy. Shirt tucked, untucked, doesn't matter. This is a great one size fits all holster. Are there holsters that I like better in specific situations? Absolutely. But this is a holster that's cheap, effective, and fits the bill almost all of the time. So it's one of my favorites. Finally, Weird question that I get fairly often. James, what jacket are you wearing in this video? A jacket's a pretty critical piece of gear because it fills so many roles. It keeps you warm, it holds your shit, and, in my opinion, it's the anchor statement piece in an outfit that just ties the whole thing together. The jackets I get the most questions about are by a huge margin from G-Star. G-Star is a really weird Dutch label and they make quality outerwear with a heavy military surplus influence. They flat out say military surplus is an inspiration for their jackets. So I think it's neat that they basically make classic Milserp jackets with a contemporary redesign. They also make a lot of good athletic and fitted options, so it looks almost like you just picked it up from the tailor if you get the right fit. They make some straight and some loose cuts as well for my cheese curd loving Midwesterners out there. G-Star is not cheap, but it's not expensive. It's cheaper than Arc'teryx, between maybe $100 and $500 for a jacket, mostly. It isn't as functional as something from like Arc'teryx or Patagonia, but they look a lot better. G-Star are also the masters of coming up with really weird features and pockets in their jackets, which is something that I love. For example, one of mine has a low profile sleeve pocket that holds a room key or a couple of credit cards that you can kind of keep separate from your wallet and you can get to them quickly without digging in your pants pocket. Another one of mine has small zip pockets kind of near the bottom of the jacket zipper where you can stow stuff that you don't want to get found like cash, important papers, your dad's LSD, whatever. Whatever. If you're a patch fiend, some of their jackets have patch panels too. I've got a really cool bomber jacket that I got in DC that's reversible with a classic black quilt pattern on one side and navy on the other. These guys just have some really clever ideas and I like their stuff a lot. Now be warned, if you go to G-Star's website, there is a lot of really, really weird shit on there. But don't let that scare you away. Check some of their stuff out, buy it, try it. Hell, buy two sizes and send one of them back if it doesn't fit. They send you a shipping label with your order and whatever you don't like, they give you a no questions asked, 100% refund, no return shipping, no restocking fee, none of that bullshit. Just buy a bunch of stuff, if you hate it all, send it all back and you get 100% of your money back. Customer service is top notch. I think G-Star is basically like triple lot design but slightly less expensive better looking, better customer service, and better returns. You guys, you've been trying to jack my swag for years, which is understandable. Hopefully this video shed some light. It was interesting for you all. I know I act like a little bit of a sucker sometimes, but I think you all know deep down, I'm appreciative of you watching, and I hope the stuff that we talked about in today's video makes you happier, healthier, and more handsome than you already are, you scoundrel you, and maybe a little more dangerous too. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll try to answer. If you like this video and you want to know about more gear I obsess over, like bags, duffels, shoes, holsters, whatever, leave suggestions below. Thank you as usual to Ventura Munitions and Top Gun Supply for sponsoring the channel. And thanks again for watching. I love you.